Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna build this quad. Let's get to it. Okay, so a lot of you are probably wondering why I have a Ishii Tyro 79 sitting on my desk today. Well, it's simple. We're gonna build this thing. I know this doesn't make sense, but you gotta hear me out, right? Granted, we spend a lot of time around here, cranking things up to the next level, doing builds that are completely over the top, like this one, for example. Uh, sometimes they don't work out, but hopefully in those cases you guys learn from my mistakes and you're building some awesome quads. Well, at the same rate, this channel does a lot to cater to people that are just getting started, and that's awesome. I mean, this is my mission to get people in the air. I have been so gifted at this sport, I'm so thankful for everything and where I am right now that that's literally why this concept exists and this is why I do what I do. So anyway, with all of that, why is this Ishin here? That's really simple. I personally feel that Ishin has a very important place in our hobby and that's because they get a lot of people in the air. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for Ishin. They make good, affordable models that fly well, that have given many, many people the opportunity to get into the sky. My relationship with Ishin goes all the way back to the Naze 32 wizard, if you can believe that. As a matter of fact, I ended up buying two wizards. The first one was the Naze, and the second one had the SP Racing F3 flight controller in it. I personally feel that this particular model is an excellent representation of what somebody might be doing for their first build. Maybe your first quad was a bind and fly or a plug and play. You've made a couple upgrades to it, or maybe you've had to replace a couple of pieces. Now you want to go a little bit further and you want to do your first build, but you're not quite sure what parts are going to work together. I understand that. So maybe you're looking for a kit. You're going to get everything all together in one box that you're going to need in order to do your build. And that's why I have this here. So we're going to open this thing up. We're going to look at the pieces. I'm going to give you some building tips as we go along and I put this thing together. And as long as everything goes according to plan during the build, the follow-up video is going to be the first flight and tips on what you should be doing when you bring your new quad to the field for the first time. All right, that's enough of that. Let's get this thing open. <laughs> All right, looks like we've got a bottom plate, a VTX, more frame pieces, a couple of carbon wrenches. We'll put that with the frame. Uh, what's this? Flight controller. We'll make an electronics pile. ESC, electronics pile. More frame stuff. Frame, cables, battery strap. Oh, look at this. They even give you a few zip ties. That's pretty cool. Uh, spare motor nuts. Looks like here's our hardware for our flight stack. Uh, we've got a set of props here. These are probably lousy. We're not going to use them. Uh, some other screws. Not sure what these are for or why they're separated. One motor, two motors, three motors, four motors. Uh, camera. Maybe these are the screws for the camera. That might be my guess. Okay, camera. Ah, uh, and that's it. That's the contents. Now, when we begin a project like this, I kind of like to take everything and separate it out into phases. Phase number one is going to be getting our frame figured out and together. Phase number two is going to be getting our motors on the frame. Phase number three is going to be our ESC and flight stack. 
Uh, and then from there, we're going to do some bolting and soldering and figure out our camera and all that good stuff. Before we actually get the soldering iron heating up, uh, I want to show you guys how I find documentation to do the assembly on these things. A lot of these products don't come with anything at all. In fact, this whole pile doesn't even include one single piece of paper that tells you where to put a single screw. That can kind of be a problem, especially if you're getting started. So essentially, this is what I do to find the information I'm looking for. In just about every single case, I'm gonna head over to the website where that product came from. In this case, Banggood shipped me out this model for the purpose of doing these videos. I head over to their website and I simply just do a search for Ishin Tyro 79. And as a matter of fact, you're gonna get suggestions as you type that in, so you probably don't even have to type the whole thing in. After doing that search, I literally get every single spare piece that we're gonna need moving forward. But here's the reason why I come here, is you're gonna get references and information amongst these items. So example, the flight controller, if I go to this page, there's gonna be additional information regarding the flight controller that may not be in the overall model page, okay? You follow where I'm going with this? So I found the flight controller, I've found the ESC, I've also found the VTX, and the VTX has the most information here, quite a bit on setting it up. So this could be helpful. This could be your key. So here's the page for the model itself, Yishin Tyro 79, 140 millimeter, awesome. Let's scroll down, and as we go, and as we go, and as we go, right here, Ishin Tyro 79 English Manual. When I click on that, I get a PDF file that is going to give us a reasonable set of instructions and give us a general idea on how we're supposed to assemble this thing. I looked through this already and I found probably the most helpful thing in here for me is the frame diagram specifically because it tells you what size screws should be going in what parts of the frame. I have a feeling that everything's going to be mixed together here. Uh, we're going to have to figure that out. We got some 6mm screws and 8mm screws and 4mm and 5mm. We're probably going to want to separate all these out as we figure this out. Uh, not a big deal. We can, we can do that no problem. And one last tip that might be able to help, I'm just going to head back over here to the page for the model itself. Use these images as reference. Just this picture alone gives us a lot of information. We can see where a lot of the pieces of the frame are designed to go. We can see the ESC is mounted on the bottom, followed by the flight controller and the VTX. Uh, and really, I'm just going by these visual references. Oh, and one last thing that I want to point out. Uh, right here on the flight controller, most of your electronics are going to have this. If you don't have excellent documentation, you you might only have the option of going by the silk screen on the flight controller. So here we can see we have you know our our UART two. Uh, looks like we have a pad that we need to short if we're using SBUS or PPM. We've got a, a LED pad here. Sometimes you're going to have no choice but to reference to this stuff because you're not going to have any other information. Again, we look on the back side of the board, we have more info, SBUS, 5 volt ground. We've got our ESC connection here, our battery positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative. Use these references. They're, they didn't put this here for no reason. You know, it's, it can be helpful. Oh, and also all your electronics are going to have an orientation. Most of them are going to be indicated by this arrow here. Uh, specifically on the flight controller on the top of it. Look for this arrow. It doesn't mean that you can't mount your electronics in a different orientation. It just simply means that if you do so, you're going to have to take extra steps to accommodate for this type of thing inside of Betaflight. Uh, we're just not going to do that today. You know, look for your arrow. Makes things easy. Your quad won't flip out. <laughs> All right, let's get into the parts. I've done a little pregame with some of this stuff. And part of that pre-game I did with the frame. A lot of high-end frames, the carbon's going to have chamfered edges. Basically, that means that the edge is going to be rounded over. It's going to be nice and smooth. 
the edges on a carbon frame can be very sharp. It can cut wires. Uh, and I promise you that if you don't clean up the edges on your battery strap, it's literally a matter of time before that strap tears on one of those sharp edges. And then you're looking for your battery. Uh, who knows? Maybe you don't even find it all. So it literally takes just a few minutes. Uh, use a small piece of sandpaper. Just go around the edges of the frame. Also, small files work good as well. Small file on the curved area. I'm not going to do any sanding on this here at my desk. You need to be careful when you're working with carbon. When you're sanding this, I recommend wearing gloves. I recommend wearing some type of face mask. And I also recommend protecting your clothing. Once you're done sanding all the edges, wash the frame thoroughly with soap and water and wash your hands afterwards too. Then you can just dry the frame with like a towel and you're good to go. So a little bit of prep, that can go a long way. And actually this small step can prevent some heartache in the future. Let's get some motors on this frame. So these motors, the threads on them are both clockwise and counterclockwise. And that is indicated by the two different colored nuts. So it's important which arm these motors go on. Uh, and that's going to be based on the direction that the motors are spinning. If the motor is spinning I guess you could say in the incorrect direction, your prop nut can spin off and, well, you're going to have a bad time. Here's the thing though, a lot of your more high-end motors only have a single direction nut and that's only because it's easier for everybody. Uh, but this one, both directions, so make sure that you do put the right motor on the right arm. To figure this out, we need to decide the orientation of our frame. In this case, it looks symmetrical. So literally just choose what side you want to use as the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. Maybe you put a small scratch in the carbon while you're sanding it. Uh, put that on the inside where it's going to get covered up, right? So we're going to have to get our motors here in the right spots. Let's get them screwed on. When putting your screws in, make sure that the screw isn't so long that it goes all the way through the carbon of the frame and pokes out past the base of the motor. If that screw is touching the windings in the stator, uh, well, you're going to ruin the motor uh, and that's pretty much the end of it. So screw length on your motors is incredibly important. They cannot be too long. Once all the motors are installed and I come back and I button stuff up, I'm going to put Loctite on the motor screws. Again, like another critical tip with these, always put Loctite on your motor screws. Once we're satisfied with our motors, I think we're ready to move on to the ESC which we've got over here. Looks like it's gonna be going in some kind of direction like this. Let's get our standoffs figured out. It looks like the first roadblock that I've run into is they didn't include enough standoffs to build the stack. That's a little disappointing. In this case, it's not a big deal. I have one of these kits with all the standoffs I'm gonna need. And if you're building, this is something that I recommend picking up. You may not have this for your first build, but please understand that this isn't an uncommon thing. Uh, when you're building any of these, you could run into this type of hiccup. Um, luckily, they're inexpensive and it's easy to move forward from this. Um, so let's just continue and get the stack together. Make sure that you retin your motor leads. And when I solder them on, I'm just simply going to swing them around and line them up with the pad in order. This should allow for a neat and clean install. This is all looking pretty good. So I'm going to grab a zip tie from the kit and I'm going to use it to secure my front motor wires. I'm not going to use it for the rear motor wires just yet. I have something planned for that that you'll see what I'm going to do uh, when we get there. But for now, I'm just going to secure the fronts. We're going to leave the backs how they are. We'll complete the installation of the ESCs with the pigtail for the battery and I'm also going to plug in the cable that is going to go to the flight controller. Uh, here's a pro tip on this. Make sure you pay attention to the orientation on how this is wired. Make sure everything is going to line up uh, between the ESC and your flight controller, especially the power and ground. The last thing you're going to want to do is send battery voltage down anything other than what is designed to accept it. That is how you're going to ruin your ESC. That is how you're going to ruin your flight controller. So make sure that this lines up. Make sure when you plug this connector in, 
everything matches up down here. Same thing on your flight controller. Just because this connector goes in, don't take for granted that all these wires are gonna line up properly. And I'm even gonna say that with items coming from the same manufacturer. I have seen situations where somebody has selected uh, ESC, also a flight controller from the same company. They've simply plugged the cable in that came with the all-in-one and they've burned out their flight controller. So again, check this wiring. I can't put enough emphasis on how important this really is. I'm liking this, let's prep our flight controller. But I think that I am going to direct solder the VTX and both the flight controller. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is it's gonna provide me with a more secure connection than just simply plugging in the connector. You don't have to do this step. You can certainly use the connectors uh, that came with your kit. Uh, but again, I think I can do this a little bit better by direct soldering to the flight controller. Also, I want to use smart audio in the VTX and the cable that it came with does not have the wire for smart audio, I'm gonna have to add that. Again, not a big deal. We're gonna figure it out, but we'll get it done. With all the soldering out of the way, now we just simply have to figure out how we're gonna fit everything in here. So I'm gonna get this attached. Flight controller, get a couple standoffs on top to hold it down. We're gonna need the space for our VTX, so Let's get that squared away. Remember when I said we were gonna deal with the rear motor wires later? Well, now it's later. Let me show you what I'm gonna do with these. So I use a little trick with a couple of zip ties to secure my motor wires, but also to attach my antenna to the frame, basically 90 degrees from one another, sticking out from the arms. So let's do that. All right, zip ties in place. I'm gonna slide a little bit of heat shrink over the end here. Slide all the way down to the end. And let's shrink her up. There, just trim the excess. There you go, there's an antenna installed. It's just a matter of getting the rest of the frame installed so we can attach the camera. While I wiggle the canopy into position, all the screws and everything on here are still loose, so it's got some play and flexibility. This should make it a little bit easier to get it on here. Should probably plug my camera in first. While you're getting things buttoned up and everything tightened down, it's really important to make sure that your canopy is not pinching any of your wires, either here in the back or up here in the front. Uh, if it is, you're gonna have problems. I mean, it's literally as simple as that. So just really check and make sure everything in here isn't pinched as you're tightening it down. Uh, and you know, and still make sure all your connectors stay connected and you know, everything's good. Just, you know, pay attention to what you're doing and you should be fine. I think the last phase is to get our antenna zip tied on. Check this out. We did it. She's together. So I think what we should take away from this video is even though that parts are included in a kit, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be a cut and dry build. You might need to make some changes or you might need some additional parts depending on your personal preferences. I still have to configure and update Betaflight and I'm probably gonna have to update the ESCs and those are gonna have to be configured as well. I'm not gonna do that in this video because I think this video is long enough as it is. I also have a ton of videos on working with Betaflight on this channel. So if you need a reference, please check one of those out. In the follow-up video for this build, we're gonna take her out to the field, see how she performs and work on a basic tune. I wanna say thank you to Banggood for sending me out the Esheen Tyro 79 kit for me to build and also the FR Sky XM Plus receiver. And of course, as always, a huge thanks to Hot Dog FPV for keeping me warm this winter with these awesome hoodies. These things are so comfortable, it's like being hugged all day by Ben himself. Well, that's it. That's all I got for this one. Be sure to check out the follow-up, but I'm out of here. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.